the webinar on the pedagogy of mobile learning. At the end of this short webinar, you should be able to identify effective mobile learning pedagogical practices that integrate existing learning and teaching theories and approaches while recognizing the pedagogical nuances of mobile learning. Let's start by looking at the key characteristics of mobile learning. Mobile learning is portable and flexible. It is the portable mobile devices that we use to access mobile learning, to communicate, to interact with peers, experts, and content of learning. It is flexible because we can complete mobile learning activities from wherever we are at the time of convenience, except for a few activities that would be time or place bound. It is a type of learning that has a capability of being student-centered. In well-designed mobile learning, we address the unique needs and preferences of our students. Mobile learning tends to be personal. Quite often, it's our private mobile devices that we use to enter into mobile learning transactions. Therefore, we know the tools that we are using, they're familiar tools, and help us customize the learning. Mobile learning experience tends to be really complex and fragmented at times. So it's very important that we make sure that there is guidance and facilitation incorporated into effective mobile learning. And it tends to be chunked up since we often enter into those learning transactions while on the go on-demand, impromptu, smaller pieces of learning are actually much more convenient. Learning then is often on and off, and we have to make sure that in the design and the guidance we provide to our learners, we try to combine all these chunked up bits of learning seamlessly, so students can actually learn over time. And yes, Many would agree that mobile learning is pervasive and ubiquitous. It enters into our formal learning time as well as into our informal life. We combine formal and informal learning while carrying devices across the various aspects of our life. These are some of the benefits of mobile learning. Learning using mobile devices definitely fits into the lives of learners and teachers. You can utilize your dead time while waiting in a lineup, commuting, or you can access learning when you actually put some time aside for focused, more structured learning activities. Immediacy of communication is a, very, a vital benefit. Um, as I mentioned, you can communicate with people whenever you need their support, but you can also exchange information and share data. You can also access learning from remote areas, from isolated uh, places and situations, or if you live in dispersed communities. Mobile learning is a great way of accessing learning at the distance. You can access your peers and experts from wherever you are, whenever you need their support. Mobile learning is also perceived as an acceptable way for learners to receive reminders and uh, chasers and notifications. Through those, we can help our learners with their time management. By using bite-sized e-learning resources and delivering those to our students, um, in various situations in life and work, we can actually help them with the field practice or work-based learning. For example, um, clinical practice, when students send questions to us about situations that they're encountering and as, as experts, we are able to send information back to them through the social networks or other tools on our mobile devices. And then it's a great way of combining the abstract representational knowledge and concrete environmentally situated knowledge and can, that they can be integrated together as part of the mobile learning activities and experiences. And some more benefits. Being able to incorporate active learning into the learning and teaching experience would be another 
valuable benefit of learning with mobile devices. Bringing in those activities that are experiential, hands-on, and take place in real-life context enhances the learning outcome and the learning process as well. Therefore, situating learning activities in a context that supports the learning with, by motivating students, by bringing in additional information is what we can do while designing effective mobile learning. It is important that students would be able to complete learning activities that are embedded in real world situations and, and locations so that students can reflect in close proximity to the learning event. Using mobile devices, students and teachers are able to capture data, record the learning process, create their own learning-generated artifacts, and exchange those as well. Now, context-inspired authentic um, content and challenges is another very important element of learning with the use of mobile devices. Learners can go into new learning environments that they've never had a chance to visit and, um, and experience themselves before those mobile learning tools were available to them. Therefore, we, by using um, and designing mobile learning in such a way that we support users' autonomy, we can help users to become self-regulated students and, 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 and progress with their learning with um, less and less support and scaffolding from the experts. And then there is opportunities for flexible collaboration and knowledge co-creation, um, as well as uh, higher levels of accessibility for learner, or learners that have special educational needs. What types of learning are appropriate for mobile learning? According to Naismith et al. 2004, mobile technologies can be used in the design of different types of learning activities and um, experiences. They listed these six types of learning, starting with the behaviorist learning where feedback and reinforcement can be facilitated by mobile devices and then moving on to constructivist learning where new concepts and new knowledge are, be, uh, are, are built with the help of using devices when uh, learners are engaging in the social and physical space with others as well as communicating through the mobile tools. Then situated learning is when learners take a mobile device into an educationally relevant real world location and they learn from that particular setting, from that particular context that it's full of information. Um, then collaborative learning is when mobile devices are essentially the tool for communication and exchange of resources as well as insights and other types of information. Informal and life learning is when we use um, mobile devices in a less structured, more opportunistic way. We are usually driven our personal uh, curiosity or the need to look up some information or maybe write a quick email to an expert or a peer asking a question when the information is actually um, not available in any other way but through a mobile device. And then there's supporting le uh, supported learning where mobile devices monitor progress um, of the learner. They help you look up your schedules and dates, um, review and manage your progress, help you with your time management, um, and basically um, many other types of learning that probably are not listed here, but you can think of right now. All in all, learning using mobile devices enables learning that is authentic, contextual, collaborative and connected, personalized, active, relevant and meaningful. It is individual, collaborative, but guided by experts and supported by experts as well as peers who are sharing information with you, their insights, as well as evaluating and peer evaluating your learning. And through all of that, it is learning that's empowering and engaging. I'd like to share with you a brief example 
of mobile assisted language learning study. Here at the college, a community college in Toronto, Canada, um, second language students were using mobile devices to augment their in-class learning with authentic practice in the real world. They used their mobile devices to communicate with the language teacher, to communicate with other peers, to listen to models of how to utter certain sentences in, in English, also to look up um, resources and information such as dictionaries, but more importantly to interact with each other, to interact and record the interaction with real language speakers, native speakers of the English language, and also to interact with the environment. This is to um, capture artifacts, to create artifacts and capture photos as well as videos or other audio recordings of how people use the language and what the meaning of particular words or of particular sentences would be. Um, students use their phones to work on group activities such as creating an audio dictionary of the English language. They also put together an interactive map of the landmarks of Toronto. Um, they worked on creating a database of idioms that were supported with pictures of the usage of those idioms in the real world and uh, recordings of what the right pronunciation of the, the words would be. And they also put together a student radio program and all was recording using their mobile devices. The real life language practice that students were able to participate in with the help and support of mobile devices was what they called at the end a very effective, engaging and empowering mobile assisted language learning experience.